All right, you guys, uh, this lesson is coordinate proof using distance with quadrilaterals. So this is our uh, fourth lesson in this module, an integrated math three lesson. I'm on a rental computer, so I'm, I'm hoping this works. This is a, my second rental because the other one kept crashing on me. So hopefully my school district will get me set up to have my regular computer back. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathLog.com. And then make sure you click Integrated Math 3 at the top in that yellow toolbar when you go there. There you'll see all kinds of classes. Anyways, there's our um, our question is how, how can we use slope and distance formula and coordinate proof? So um, we're going to talk about slope here. So there's several ways to talk about slope. So if it goes through two points and you're finding slope, then you use slope formula. And you've seen that before. I know you saw it in IM2, Integrated Math 2. Um, and so um, uh, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now you can do, you can count this, uh, put this y first and then this y second, as long as you put this x first and this x second. All right, and how I remember which one goes on top, you guys, is, is X's have two legs to it. And so the two legs will hold up this fraction much stronger than if the Y's were on bottom with one leg. Okay, that's, it's dumb enough for me to remember. So anyway, uh, X's go on bottom, okay? If they give you a picture, then just uh, start with the left point and go to the right. And then it's rise over run. Do you remember that? Vertical lines, uh, they call them no slopes or undefined slopes, depending on the which book. If you have a, a horizontal line, your slope is zero. Um, if you're given an equation, y equals mx plus b, then this number right here in front of the x is your slope. You guys remember that. And then this one uh, is forgotten a lot, so or is never taught, actually. So if they give it to you, this is called standard form, ax plus by equals c. Or if they put the y part first and the x part second, then your slope is opposite the number that's in front of x, so which is a, so opposite a over the number that's in front of um, uh, y, so opposite a over b. Okay, so it's opposite this number over this number. Okay, opposite the number in front of the x over the number in front of y. And if you just have y equals a number, like y equals 5, then the slope is 0. If you have x equals a number, that's a vertical line. So again, vertical lines have no slope or undefined slopes, okay? All right, so this one says prove or disprove that this quadrilateral here um, is a parallelogram. Now, if they don't give you this picture, then just graph it real quick, okay? So 4, 4. So over 4, up 4, there's A. 3, 1 over 3, up 1 is B, negative 2, negative 1. So we go to the left 2, down 1 is C, and then finally, negative 1, 2. There's D right there, okay? All right, well, since they gave us a picture, you guys, uh, when they give you a picture, then we just use rise over run. Now, your textbook, you'll see, uses slope formula four times right there, but I think it's a lot easier just to do rise over run if they give you a picture, okay? So, from you always pick the left point to the right point. So, let's do all of these, okay? So, the slope of AB, okay? So, here's AB right here. So, we pick the left point and go to the right point. So, from the left point, it goes up 3 over 1. So the slope is 3 over 1. Okay, from BC, okay, so here's BC. So we pick the leftest point, which is this guy. It goes up 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 2 over 5. Okay, same thing with CD. 3 over 1, and DA is up 2 over 5. Okay, so can you see that uh, these slopes are equal, and then these slopes are equal right there? So it's a parallelogram right there, okay? So since the opposite slopes are equal, then they're parallel. This means that it has to be a parallelogram. Now on this rental computer, I don't know why it's cutting off that last letter right there, but that says A. Okay, so properties of a parallelogram, you guys. There's uh, five things about a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. You guys know that. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. You guys know that. Uh, this is from IM2. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Uh, the diagonals bisect each other. If I picked one that was forgotten, it was that one from students, okay? And then uh, consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles means the next two angles. So this angle plus this angle is 180. This one plus this one is 180, this one plus this one 180, and so on. So supplementary. So if you know one of them, say that's 60, that's 120. That would be 60, that would be 120, okay? 
Opposite angles are congruent. Uh, uh, consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, properties of a rectangle. Okay, rectangles are, are parallelograms, so those five things back here happens. All of these five things, if it's a rectangle, these are all true right there, okay? So, um, uh, but also rectangles are special parallelograms where they have four right angles. And then also, you guys, if we're talking about diagonals, then we'll use distance formula to see if the diagonals are congruent. And if the diagonals are congruent, then it has to be a rectangle, okay? All right, rhombis or rhombus is uh, singular, rhombi is plural, or some, some books say rhombuses, I don't know. Anyways, I think rhombi sounds a little more fancy. Anyways, they're also parallelograms, so all those five things happen, but uh, on a rhombus, all four sides are congruent, okay, and the diagonals are perpendicular. Now, sometimes people think it's a square. Well, squares are special types of rhombis. They're, they're, they're rectangles that are rhombis, and also the diagonals bisect the angles, so let me see if I can uh, get this a little bit bigger here. So, uh, if it's a rhombus, you guys, see how there's 10, 10 all the way around? So I know it's a rhombus right there. And uh, these, uh, this diagonal bisects this angle right there. Okay, this angle that's 54 degrees cuts it into half, 27 and 27. The supplement of 54 is 126. Can you see 54 and 126 are supplementary? And if it's a rhombus, this diagonal cuts that 126 in half. So it bisects those angles, okay? All right, so properties of a square. Well, if it's a rectangle and a rhombus at the same time, then it's a square. So it's a parallelogram. Diagonals are congruent because that's what a rectangle is. It has four right angles because that's what a rectangle is. Diagonals bisect each other. And the diagonals are perpendicular, okay? Also, you guys, I didn't put that in here, but uh, all four sides are congruent, and you guys knew that. So here we go. Let's use a little bit of our math here. Use the diagonals to determine whether the parallelogram with the given vertices is a rectangle, rhombus, or square, okay? So if it is a rectangle and a rhombus, then it's a square, okay? So let's, um, uh, and there's all kinds of ways to prove that, but here... Uh, they want us to use the diagonals. So the diagonals of K, L, M, N would be K, M would be one diagonal and L, N. And we're just following these directions. Use the diagonals. So let's uh, first find the length of K, M and the length of uh, L, N using our good old friend distance formula. Okay. So when we plug that in, you guys, okay, so from ln, okay, so this would be um, uh, uh, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared, I'm just following this, plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1, we're going to square that, and then square root all that, and we'll do that with km also, and I'm just going to save time, there it is right there, and uh, these are both lengths of the diagonal, so we get um, uh, the square root of 68 on both of those, and I'll show you in class how to do this, um, how to simplify the square root of 68 to 2 root 17. It's real easy, and you've done that before, um, but I'll show you again in class. It's pretty easy. Well, you get the prime factorization. This is 2 times 2 times 17. Do you remember factor trees? And two twos on the inside brings one two on the outside. Okay, 68 is 2 times 2 times 17, and then two twos on the inside brings one two on the outside, and the 17 stays inside. Okay, all right, so the diagonals are congruent, so we know that it's a rectangle. Now let's see if the diagonals are, because it says use the diagonals to determine whether it's a, a, a rectangle, a rhombus, or square. Okay, so if it's a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, so let's see if they are perpendicular. So we've got to use slope formula. So we're going to find the slope of these lines. Okay, so using slope formula, and we find uh, negative 4 and 1 fourth are opposite reciprocals. And if they're opposite reciprocals, that means that they're right angles or they're perpendicular. So since the slopes are perpendicular, then it's also a rhombus. So if it's a rectangle and a rhombus, then it's going to be a square right there. Okay, so the answer is that's a square. Okay, now notice it does not say graph these points and then make an educated guess. It says use the diagonal. So we've got to use KM as a diagonal and LN. So we have to do distance formula to see if the diagonals are congruent. 
And then we have to use slope formula to see if the diagonals are perpendicular because the directions up here say use the diagonals, okay? All right, so here we go. Same thing, use the diagonals. So we're going to do the same thing with uh, the length of PR and the length of QS. So here's our distance formula right there, okay? So there we go. And we finally we find that uh, one length is the square root of 98, which is, uh, this is um, uh, 2 times 7 times 7 which is 7 root 2, but but I can see that the square root of 98 and the square root of 50 are not equivalent. This is 5 root 2, by the way. This is 7 root 2. They're not equal, but right here I can see they're not equal right there. So since they're not equal, then it can't be a rectangle. Okay, let's see if it's a rhombus. So we're going to use slope formula to see if... Um, uh, if the slopes are opposite reciprocals. And look, these are opposite reciprocals. Or if we multiply these, the, the, uh, the product of perpendicular slopes is always negative 1. So um, this is negative 1 over 1. This is positive 1 over 1. So they're like opposite reciprocals. Okay, so they're perpendicular. So since they're perpendicular, uh, then it's a rhombus, okay? And it's just a rhombus. It's not a square because it's not a rectangle. All right, you guys, if you are in my class... That's going to be your assignment. Take care.